Good morning, folks. We've got top events around the globe, space science, and two big ones on geophysics as we continue to look at the upcoming EGU conference online. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com, and we find coronal holes and plasma filaments populating north and south. We'll be watching a number of the filaments for eruption potential today. Meanwhile, the solar wind is calming back after the brief geomagnetic storm we took during the impact of the last coronal hole stream. Want to quickly look ahead to tonight. The heavy rain starts in Georgia late morning, but to the west, a strong system builds at the wind convergence and severe threats will be flying all night out of this storm. Eyes on it. Shifting southward to Central America, where Pacaya is still pumping magma out. Given its ongoing eruptive phase, I pulled the Sierra fire temperature return on goes and you can see the flickering of volcanic activity in the region. Also in the region are numerous villages, and the lava is creeping closer and closer. We've also got the March U.S. climate report linked below. No records anywhere, just a spread of heat in the east and central states and a bit cooler out west. Let's go out to space, starting with four new quadruply lensed quasars, they say. While the mechanism of the light bend is a point of contention among different cosmologies, there's no question that these odd sights in the cosmos get the universe version of a prism treatment for us here on Earth. Similar type of object, but much closer and easier to study. The Crab Pulsar Nebula is loud across the electromagnetic spectrum, and now they are tying its X-ray outbursts to the radio loud outbursts, showing that we're looking at similar processes that can act across that spectrum. FYI, this nebula is yet another example of a nova-like shell where a star is left inside to continue outbursting. A bit more eye candy here as we come to Centaurus A and map the magnetic fields of the galactic region. From outside of the galaxy and at this flat edge on view, we don't get to see much but the coherence of the fields across regions with millions of stars. It's another confirmation that the galactic magnetism is a system, not a chaotic mash of fields. To get to our first of two top stories today, we must first know what a four-bush decrease is. It's a bit of a silly name for when a CME hits Earth and the plasma and electromagnetism block out galactic cosmic rays acting as another shield even while it's potentially causing geomagnetic storms below. Here, we've got the return of Svensmark, the father of cosmic ray cloud science, set to deliver the latest on one of the most underappreciated climate forcing parameters in all of climate science. Last but not least, another in the EGU list on geomagnetic events. Here they are finding that the South Atlantic anomaly is a recurring reverse flux patch, and there is evidence that it leads the excursion and reversal process over the last 11 million years. By the way, in order for that to be the case, each excursion would need to bounce back and forth to the same locations in order to have the process unfold at a recurrent flux, which they also say today is even weaker than they'd have expected. The field continues to destabilize. Not that most of you didn't know that already, but we greatly appreciate your support, and if you are brand new here, try to catch up with our playlists and movies at suspiciousobservers.org. It can be done in only one day. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.